Hello, Gabriella. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out today to talk to me. I'm really excited about this. I've got like a million questions and a million ideas. So thank you yep. again. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So tell us what you do. You are a life coach who brings people, guides people back to themselves. Yes. Beautiful. So what does that, what does that look like? A lot of the, this, a lot of the coaching I do is, uh, you know, a lot of people come with me, come to me for trauma healing because I'm helping them he teach them the tools to help heal themselves. So a lot of the work is somatic work, but also your mindset about what's going on and getting in tune with your body and staying grounded in yourself. And one of the key things that we're I'm doing with all my clients and the number one thing we're doing is creating this grounding toolbox of things you can do in your everyday life to keep you in your center in yourself. Because a lot of people, most people, in in especially people who have trauma, tend to dissociate and their different parts of them take control and they're not really aware of them until they are aware of them. So what I do is I help people identify like who who they really are, which is at the what I like to say like the vibration of acceptance. Who are you when everything's fine? Right? Like you're here um, on the, you know, the, the consciousness chart. We I, always I go think off of the opposite though. Like it's okay. You are who you are when no one is looking. And you just said the opposite and blew my mind. Who are mm -hmm. you when everything is fine? That's when you can really be yourself. Yep. In, <laughs> and the key to that is being present, right? Because if I'm sitting here with you, say you came to me for a session, you're sitting here, everything is fine right now, right? There might be thoughts telling you that it's not fine. There might be feelings in your body from the past or something that you experienced prior that's making you feel like something's not fine but like if you're here and now you're okay you know right. and yes. a lot of the times a lot of people are coming to me because they've done this they've done some work or they've heard like I need to be positive all the time like and that's how I'm going to get to where I need to go and what I'm telling them and explaining to them is no you have to honor how you're feeling and release those lower vibrational feelings like the guilt, the shame, the anger, and the sadness, feel those, get yourself to acceptance, and then you can create from there because you don't need to be high all the time, right? Like when people are like, oh, I'm going to be in gratitude and love, like it's all love and light, like it's not all love and light. And when you go like that, you tend to swing back down. So I help people find the middle ground so that they can have a balanced life. It's like mm -hmm. trying to find this place where I oh, can... Yes. Go like this. I'm everything's yeah. good, right? Yeah, I may be feeling yeah. shitty. These shitty things have happened to me in the past, but I'm gonna honor my feelings, which only last 90 seconds. A feeling only needs to be felt for 90 seconds. We get lost in those feelings because they feel okay. really overwhelming, especially if you've repressed your feelings, which a lot of people do, because no one ever teaches us how to process our emotions. So how do you feel those? Honor the stories and then let them go to then get yourself in a more grounded, centered place to then create what you want. So you just said nobody has taught us how to do that. Did they, they know how to do this? Like, where did you learn how to do this? I personally don't think they knew because if they knew, right? they should have told us. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think people would be sharing that information. I don't know. How did you learn how to do this? I learned I had, so I have a history of uh, severe childhood trauma that was repressed for 25 years. I, and before I remembered, I was crazy. <laughs> Let's say emotionally explosive all the time. And I didn't understand where I was having these emotional explosions from because everything in like the present moment was fine. And everyone would be like, well, what's wrong with her? Right? right why are you totally. always acting like this and it was because I had all these repressed emotions that were like a backpack of stuff that I was wearing and I was just throwing all everything out of the backpack every time I had a feeling so I had to teach myself how to release the emotions in a way that wouldn't be so overwhelming for myself and then therefore not so overwhelming for everyone around me because when you can't emotionally regulate yourself you can't have good connection like it was almost like a scary person to be around 
it's like don't get her mad she's gonna just don't you know she's in, it's gonna happen yeah you know so volatile like, just volatile yeah but you like, don't know I'm, I'm sure my family yeah. always walked around on eggshells around me you know so yeah. I had to learn I did lots of different things to learn I took many different things that I've learned from like the psychology world like dbt I did a lot of that, like learning first how to identify the emotion. Like, what does it feel like in my body? How does my body react when I'm feeling that? Like, does my, am I turning flush? Is my heart racing? And then learning to identify that. So then I can identify it, feel it, and then, and then let it go instead of letting it rule my life. Yeah. So I remember Googling terms and feelings. I, I was in my forties. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, I know all the big ones. I, I know, you know, sad or I know frightened and um, I know all of those. I don't think that I really knew joy or bliss or um, jealousy. Like I would just be go straight to anger or yeah. the sadness might go straight to resentment or like the, it was such a jumble, of, like a cauldron. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, and what you're talking about is like this cauldron spoiling. Yep. You know, and that's what we talk about. We really being unsettled and dysregulated. Um, one of my aunts, when she was really helping me go through it, and she's like, you know, I I, I said, I'm so sorry of what I just did. I just totally like vomited on you <laughs> and exploded on you, you know, and that was really ugly. And and I'm sorry, I'm you know, ashamed of myself. And she's like, Jody, you're just raw. Yes. Yep. That is it. If I had all over burns and somebody even put their finger, like they were going to touch me, they didn't have to touch me. I was like, mm -hmm. it feels like that's what you're describing to me, the ch your childhood trauma. Like, how yeah. do you even know like what you're feeling? You, it, you takes <laughs> it takes years. It takes years. And you know, it, yeah. it's funny, you said the magical word, word which is shame, because everything yeah. underneath that is being driven by shame. You know, the anger, the this, the, the that, it's all because that shame is so stuck. And it's not even like, it wasn't my shame to carry, but it was my shame that I took on because it's just how the body processes when you're abused, you know, especially when someone violates your body. So yeah. the shame is like the driver of things. And then it just creates more shame over and over and over again. And what I found is like the peeling back of the layers, like, oh, I'm mad. Oh, no. Am, am I mad? Oh, I'm mad because this happened to me. Oh, I'm mad because of this. Oh, it's the shame of what happened to me. It feels disgusting. So I feel disgusting. Therefore, I'm acting disgusting. And so a lot of that has been like moving and processing it. And it looks different for everyone. In my process, it involved a lot of meditation. I sat with myself and I wasn't even when I was meditating, I had, I wasn't searching for what happened. It would just pop up for me to realize and see and be like, this is what happened. And I was like, what the hell that, that can't be true. Like that, that, that you didn't think it was real. I didn't think it was real. And then my, my mind would tell me your hair, it would give me an exact outfit, an exact day, how I looked. And it would be like, go look for a picture. And I would come out of meditation and be like, I need to find the picture. I would find the picture and I'd look exactly like that. And then I, then I would start dry heaving and like throwing up and just crying. And that's how I got it out. It was very explosive, but that's how I was able to almost reconcile with myself because the outside was reflecting the inside, even though I did not want the inside to be real. Mm -hmm. You just said, well, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Thank you. I know at this stage in the journey, most of us feel like, well, if it didn't happen, I wouldn't be helping other people today. I signed up for this at some point. But still, I'm really sorry that that, that happened you. to you. And, you know. Yeah. Um, I will say I am not one of those people who say that I signed up for this. No. I, tell I me. don't. I don't um, identify with that. I think it's really mean to my inner child. I think that if I looked at three-year-old me and said, you chose this, that would be the worst thing you could say to a kid. So right. that's how I, that's how I view it in, in a way, right. just to give myself that space to be able to not bypass it. 
because yes, I may have chosen in the ethers, but I'm here now. I'm Gabriella. I'm 32 and I, I did not and choose it. Yeah. You wouldn't choose it again. Hey, exactly. If you knew, if you really knew what you were choosing, you, that's exactly. how, what I feel. I'm like, what the, what was I thinking up there? Like going through the supermarket, pulling out all the things. Cause I'm hungry. Like why <laughs> would I do that? And it definitely makes sense. Like I hear you saying like that could be in my experience. I don't feel like it's spiritual bypassing in the way I think about it. Like, okay, it makes sense. My life makes sense if I think of it that way. Right. Yeah. But totally if somebody, well, you chose this, so enjoy the experience. And now you're a healer and you're like, yeah, don't do that to me. So thank you for. Yep. Of course I can see both of it. It's just when you're looking at it from like the parts of you. And if you, mm -hmm. I, I feel like in my personal experience, if I truly wanted to move forth and I have moved forward from it is just owning it instead of having this false sense of control that I chose it is the way that I feel about it. Like maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but my three-year-old self, you can't, you, she does not understand that. So I have to honor her in those feelings. Right. And three years old, is that, that's not arbitrary. That's three that's, years old. That's, that's, that's when it started that's for me. So yeah, from three to 15. So you're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, you really are amazing. So I'm trying to figure out which one I, I want to ask you about spiritual bypassing. I want to ask you about um, grounding. I want to ask you more about your process. But you did say the word they. You said yeah. they told me to go and get a picture. Yeah. Talk to me about that. If you can, if you feel comfortable doing that. Yes, I do. Like, I think at that point in my journey, I didn't understand who they was. I now I understand that it was my spirit team <laughs> you know I yeah. and it was just listening I, I've always been someone who believes in God for my whole life I that's how I grew up I stuck I stuck to it even after like I grew up Catholic and you know usually when you're in 10th grade you get your confirmation and then you stop going to church but you don't have to go anymore I continued to build my relationship with God I wasn't really like by the book like you know catholic but i believed in god so i kept that throughout my whole life so when i had my uh you know my remembering i really leaned into god i was like there has to be like i can't do this like there's how, how can i do this like i can't i don't want to i want to die i wanted to end this is not it for me. I am not happy. I'm fucking pissed. Like, how yeah. did this happen? But something inside of me was like, no, keep going. No one's taking your life away from you. And that was my driving factor over and over again was like, what they did to me when I was younger is not going to affect my life. Now I'm going to create everything that I want and desire. I don't care. And so I picked up this, I don't even know I genuinely don't even know what inspired this. I was like, I found this meditation book and I was like, it was called, why can't you meditate? And I was like, hmm, okay, cool. So I started doing these like two minute, like, so then I started doing these random spiritual YouTube you know, clips, YouTube videos. And you were like twin flame and this and that and past life regression. I had, I genuinely had no idea what it was, but I was doing, but you it were just clicking on all of them. I was clicking them and I was like meditating for hours a day because it felt so good to me. Like I finally had, cause my body was on fire all the time. Like I was experiencing not only the trauma in my mind, but in my body through my senses. Like it was absolutely insane. I didn't have a break from the past at all. Didn't have a break while I slept. Didn't have a break while I was awake. The only time I found a break was through meditation. So I was meditating a lot. Um, and, you know, like I said, when I was meditate, I, I wasn't searching for these things. They were coming to me. And so then 
what I realized later, obviously, is that I was almost like I was connecting with the other realm and they were giving me direction. And I was just intuitively listening because I wanted to know so bad the truth. So like my desire for the truth caused me to listen because there was no other way that I was going to move forward because what am I going to do? Stew in everything that I'm experiencing, be like, Oh, this happened to me. Well, you know, so I need, I knew for me that I, I wanted to know what happened so that I could make peace with it or at least understand what was going on. Because the more that I understood about like the more that was delivered to me from my subconscious, the more I understood myself and the way that I was acting. Because I felt a lot of shame about the way I had acted my whole life because I didn't understand. And people would look at me all the time and be like, why do you have anxiety? You're pretty. You're smart. You have a lot of friends. And I'd be like, I, I don't know. Like, I wish I knew. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be like this. There was only one moment in my entire life that I could remember feeling joy prior to the awakening and it was I would I had moved to North Carolina I was in the car with my friends and we were driving and I turned to my boyfriend at the time and I said is this what fun feels like and I was 24 years old like that was the first time I felt joy in my entire life like what did he say he was like he was just like yeah (laughs) simple like yeah this is what we do Yeah. Like this is fun. And it's not like I hadn't done fun things. I've done a lot of fun things in my life, but I had never been able to feel good about anything. Yeah. And to connect that word to it. Yeah, exactly. You know, what an aha moment Mm -hmm. that is. So you say 24, when did you get the messages? 25, I think you said, right? Yep. 25 into 26 is when it really started. Okay. So you were just yeah. kind of dipping your toe in at 24, like starting to feel around and well, try I had, to understand until the big whooshes came in. Well, I didn't even know I had another big, I had, so I had moved to North Carolina and then all of a sudden everything was good. And then all of a sudden my boyfriend at the time had like a meltdown and we broke up and I had to come home. And that's what started me on like my first, I kept calling it my, uh, my first midlife crisis, my quarter life crisis. I was like, what's going on with me? You know, whatever. And so that went on for like, so that happened when I was 24 in January, um, about a year late, five months later, we got back together. And then three months after that, I got hurt. At work, I had gotten a new job and my shoulder was killing me in my neck. And at this time, I had been a trainer for a long time, but I had gotten a job in marketing because that's what I went to school for. And I had to go on workers comp and I was not getting better. Like I was in so much pain and, and they were like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. I did acupuncture. I went to the physical therapist. I did this. I did that. Nothing mm-hmm. was working. And then he said to me, you know, I, I think it's in your head. And I was like, excuse me. He was like, I think it's in your head. And he bought me this book. He bought me a book though. And he was like, you know, this is how you solve neck and back pain through the way you think. And I was like, absolutely, absolutely not. You know, but I was like, whatever, I'll read it. And (laughs) right. Too much. I'm like, I can't with myself. And then I'm at the stair. I'm on the, I go to the gym. I'm on the stairmaster and I'm reading the book and I'm like, this really sounds like me. And then I got to a part where it was like a lot of people with chronic neck and back pain were just abused as a child. And until they, you know, until they face the trauma, the neck and back pain are there. Boom. First memory, neck pain gone. And that was, that's amazing. Beginning. That was the beginning. Yeah. And I what gift, right. Mm-hmm. When I was really going through it, I remember saying like, I couldn't describe about my back. I'd been to the doctors several times and they're like, just rest it and ice it and whatever. And meanwhile, I'm like crying, 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 pulling more back. I had no idea. I had no idea. Like I'm pulling my back out even more. Um, But yeah, I, I couldn't describe them. Like my back is broken. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what I did back there, but yeah, I stopped crying and said oh that feels really good and then that was kind of the progression 
of that. Uh -huh. But yeah, neck and back pain and migraines, I think too. I mean, it all kind of goes together. My people with migraines two. are like, Ugh. you had those two? Yep, yep I had those anymore? two. Not anymore. So, Not anymore. Tell us about the migraines. So <laughs> the body keeps the score. <laughs> the body does. <laughs> The body keeps the score. And as much yeah. as I wanted to try to say that, like, it's because of X, Y, and Z, it was always the trauma that was causing me pain. And the more that I acknowledged the trauma, the less the pain showed up in my body. So it, when I would, this was my, my pattern was like, I would have immense pain somewhere and then I would have a memory and then the pain would go away. And that was the process for about almost a year and a half, I want to say it kept going like that. It would show up here. It would show up there. And I was like, what in the world is going on? Uh, but the migraines went away uh, the, when I started meditating because whatever I was doing was allowing the energy to move through because this also, I feel like I wouldn't suggest for people to do it the way that I did it. I think I really was a hard headed wanting to know why, you know, well, you're like, a trailblazer also like, we were making it up as we went along exactly like no one was yeah. guiding us. don't do it like I did I, I had yeah. to do it this way yeah <laughs> you guys have a choice you guys can just feel the have feelings and you don't have to have a story with them right you don't have to relive every single detail in for in years pain. literally for years that's literally yeah. what was for going years. on and now we yeah. know that you can, you know, almost tell your brain, no, thank you. And then just feel, which is a relief. And I'm glad no one will have to do that because I used to say, I would not wish this on my worst enemy because it was yeah. one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I was traumatized from remembering the trauma. Like still to this day, sometimes when something new is coming up, I have to remind myself that my whole life isn't going to blow up just because I'm remembering something because each time I remembered something at the beginning, my life would just, I was right. like, who am I? I don't even know who I am anymore. Every day I was like, who am I? Yeah. So but, you're like retraining your whole body. Yes. You retrained your whole body and not yet. I mean, when do we get to the point where at this point, if somebody said to you, this is going to change, you're going to get a new job tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. What would yeah. your body do? And what would you tell, what would be your process? If Maybe really a new like, job would be exciting to you. Think about, <laughs> think about something that might put you back in that state of like. I would spend a lot of time on the ground, a lot of time sitting outside on the ground. I would really have to intentionally sit outside and be like, I am safe. I am protected. Everything is always working out. I would have to talk to myself and allow myself to feel whatever fear was coming up um, so that I could actually get myself to do it because I don't think it would benefit me to just like hop into something without giving myself the space to process whatever is still lingering inside of there because there is still that fear, right? So just giving yeah, I mean, myself does that ever go away? We, I don't I Not don't know. Yet. I've come a it long has, way. Same. I, I think that it gets easier. I I think you just learn how to work with it better. If that makes sense. I mean, maybe it's just part of being human. And that's what keeps us anchored to the ground. Because otherwise we'd float off and be like, everything's great. I'm just going to go do this. You know, like. <laughs> I'm going to meditate for a couple of days. Yeah. I'll catch you guys later. And you know what's Did crazy? Did you ever find yourself? Go ahead. Tell me. Right. I was going to say, I don't know if this happened for you as you got further along your process, but the further along that I've gotten, the less I'm meditating. Like I don't meditate like I used to at all. Like if anything, it's like five, 10 minutes tops. I'm not like deep in it. I'm almost like, I, I feel like the channel already. So are you at the zero point now more in your daily life? naturally so that you don't have to go to this this um I want to say like preordained or preset space like I go outside I sit I do this like now you can have that feeling without all those things being in place yes and I think that just comes with doing it right because then my body is yeah. just like 
oh yeah, this is how we feel now. So it's like I've trained my body to feel that way so that I don't have to do all the things all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. I get up in the morning and I sit on my med meditation pillow with my hape and I'm here for like five minutes and then I'm like, I let the, the dream world go because I'm someone who dreams very intensely. And if I don't intentionally release my dreams during the day in the morning, they will like run my day. It's crazy. Interesting. So okay. I just, I do that. And then I just relax and don't give myself too much to do in the morning. And, and then I go. So it's almost like that, that soft morning, but with like, not the to do's because I used to do soft the morning. I really like that. It's just, it makes it way easier <laughs> to step into the day, you know? Yeah. So I, my affirmations, this, that, and that. And I'm grateful that I did that. It worked for me. And now I have trained my subconscious to already believe those things. But the the softness is helpful. That is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about affirmations a little bit. Because okay. when you were saying, okay, I sit outside and I imagine you going like this at, for, with both hands. Maybe yeah. I saw a video of you, but I, I imagine you doing that and like what they would call reparenting yourself, you know, mm -hmm. comforting yourself, loving yourself, asking your body, what do I need? What am I afraid of? And all of that. But when you're saying I am safe, I am. Sometimes I feel like, listen, that's giving yourself cognitive dissonance when you're doing these mantras and things and saying like, I am beautiful. I'm going to have a million dollars. I am safe when, listen, I know that I'm missing teeth and I don't like that part about myself. I know that, you know, I'm not going to have a million dollars. I have what I need. Do you know what I'm saying? Like my, I would be playing ping pong. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you did that with the affirmations. So I started with something that I would believe right? Uh, okay. I, that makes sense. I didn't start with, don't start with a million dollars or being a supermodel. Okay. Not a good no, plan. Definitely not. And this is what I teach people too. It's like you okay. doing that to yourself is then doing the ping pong. It's setting you back. Gaslighting like, yourself. No, you can't do that. Blah, 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 this and that. So you got to right, start with right. something that makes sense for your brain now until you get to a different part in your journey where then you can, and then expand on that affirmation to make You're it right. feel more believable for you. You know, like maybe yeah. you're like if you want to manifest, like I, I have, you know, a thousand dollars, like that feels like you can get behind it. You don't have so many limiting beliefs about it already. Yes you know, but the, the good thing about the big affirmations is it's showing you what you have to work through. And that's a good key factor for people is like, when you write it down, what, what feeling comes up for you? What are the thoughts telling you? Oh, I can't be a million dollars because, you know, money is the root of all evil. Is that true? Oh, no, it's not true. Okay, maybe I can believe this. Oh, you know, that one time, you know, the rich people in my city were so mean. So rich people are mean. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be rich. Oh, no. And maybe they just were having a bad day, you know? So it's getting behind those different thoughts in uh, training in like reframing those thoughts for yourself. Because a lot of the times, especially when it comes with like, the money stuff, is it's just other people's voices telling you how to feel about it. And things you've heard, someone else said about it. So how can you write something down that you can get behind? And when, before you get behind doing it, look at the limiting beliefs before you do it. So then you're not just wasting your time circulating that, you know, lower vibrational energy up into yourself without, unless you're going to process it by putting your hand on your heart and your belly and breathing, you know, but right. how do you write that awareness? I love that. So can I ask you when you work with, what are you working on with your clients these days? Like, I feel like when you say trauma coach, I personally know that you do so much more. That's like a big, you know, umbrella term, catch all phrase. And I feel like you could work on, well, I know you could work on any part of that journey. You went through it, yeah. you spent your literal life reviewing it, and now you're committed to helping other people, right? Yeah. I feel like we go through as a society, like, okay, trauma is the big thing, ADHD. Then we learned about narcissists. Then we learned about trauma. Then we learned about somatic. What is the wave now? What are we people looking for now? 
So a lot of the people I'm working with are on more of the parts work journey, identifying the parts of them that are uh, running the show instead of their higher self and uh, processing and integrating those old stories. We're doing a lot of soul retrieval, going back into the old story and, you know, rewriting it, grabbing that part of us and then integrating it back into the body so that it's not creating its own life somewhere else, somewhere and creating what you don't want. Um, we're doing a lot of that while also opening up to manifesting what we really want. So it's about it's about both, I feel, right now. Um, what I found the key to this is that when people are um, trying to create something, that's when all the old stories and limiting beliefs are showing themselves, and that's when it's an easier time to process it. So it gives us a look into what's really coming up, what's really running the show, and how can we together, or how can I get you to you know, feel into it, go to the story, call it back, but then also clear the energy in your body. So we're doing a lot of, you know, releasing wherever the shame is, naming it black and releasing it through the feet and, you know, filling it up with white light. We're doing a lot of entity removals nowadays. Um, so it's just kind of a mix of both. That's kind of the, the world that I'm dabbling in. And it's funny yeah, for me to I mean, talk people... about it. I don't speak about it. I kind of just... You don't. I, I really just don't. I just kind of like, if someone comes to me, I'm just tuning to their energy. I'm talking, like I'm getting whatever, you know, spirits telling me their team is telling me, and then I'm moving like that, but I'm also not like marketing it that way, you know, because well, my you think that your team, team brings them to you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I That's feel, where like I feel my, too. Yeah. my personal responsibility to get the person to like, it's coming from them. It's not coming from me. I'm not the healer. I'm just the healing energy you're in so that you can then do it yourself because I'm just walking you through how to do it because my goal is for these people to come to me so that they don't need me anymore, that they can do it themselves. Like everything that we're doing together is something that they can do alone. Yeah. You're teaching them how to fish. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I also think people know now that they have trauma but then you know what do you do with it yeah right and people are learning about the body talking about entity removal and parts work soul retrieval like did you ever think that this would be just regular talk this would be our lexicon now <laughs> or your lexicon even right you know it's crazy I too like i like no one taught me how to do it I just did it <laughs> do you, you know it was a remembrance it, a I remembrance. it. it was like I, I had it yeah. I experienced it once and then all of a sudden I was like oh I can do I can do this this is interesting and then oh I can teach other people how to do this and I don't need someone to tell me that I can do this because I already know how to do it because it's just literally intuitive <laughs> Because like, I've been doing it. Yeah, for how many years? <laughs> you know, how right. many lifetimes? And that's been, the lifetime part has been coming up in other parts of my world. Like seeing a lot of people I'm around having now these, you know, past life things come back. And how do you integrate that? Like that is a part of parts work too, is like, oh, it it's playing off of something that happened in this life because it happened in another life. How do I transmute that and integrate that into the now to get me on my timeline? Definitely get a past life regression with me. Yeah. That would be a good one too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what people that helps me a lot. Yeah. It's, I mean, honestly, I say it over and over and over. If I didn't see this stuff myself in these sessions and having my own session, I'd be like, um, Full retrieval entity removal they're full of shit you know people will believe anything you know and give Absolutely. their money to anything but it, it worked and that's what I was meant to see mm -hmm. and the other thing is I would start doing things with my hands and I'm always talking about like the creases and weird things with my hands and stuff later on I read in a book oh this is what Joe this is what I've been doing but I knew what I was doing I am yep. sending energy. I am healing. I don't see anything. I don't like have the um, 
like see people's auras or energy or whatever. Yeah, I, I knew yeah. something was happening. Yeah. You know, so kind yeah. of you too. And then you experience it and you're like, oh, wait. Yeah. Like, oh, doing... okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, do you it's... think that, do you think that you were a healer in many, many past lives and you're tapping into that higher self going, okay, this is your time. Absolutely. And I, my whole yeah. life has been someone who like, I just knew I've always just known things and I, I didn't know how to explain it. They would come through dreams, this and that. Like my parents always said, you're a witch. Like my family's always like, you are so weird. And I'm like, I don't know how you know. <laughs> I know. I like, don't ask questions, but I just know maybe everyone should listen to me. I don't know. You know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> or you're going to learn the hard way. Yeah, literally. And I was like, I don't know how yeah. to explain it. It's just something I can't explain. But also my name means God is my strength. So, I mean, I always. <laughs> that is, that is pretty amazing. Yeah, actually. So now you are in Mexico, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what do you got? What are you doing in Mexico? Your life coaching probably online, right? Mostly virtual. Or do you have clients that come see you? Like, um, what? How, how does that work? It's virtual and I've been writing a book and I'm at the tail end of my book right now, which has been for you. an experience in and of itself. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So do you have, or did you have a life coach that helped you with this or did you go to different, like I had to go to all kinds of different, for my healing? Go to one person. Yeah. yeah I, I to many people. Many people, not one life coach. It was like, wherever I was at, I had one person yep. then I needed somebody else then it was not yeah they always showed up they were like always I'm a projector they just come brilliant <laughs> like first brilliant. so the first past life regression person I ever saw I didn't even know what it was my client at the time I was training he handed me an envelope with $500 and he said you need to go see this past life regression guy I know you're gonna think I'm crazy like it's not it works like this and that I was like okay Cool. Yeah. And then I went to go do that. You're paying for it. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll try it. But th that set me on the whole thing. I didn't even know what it was. And I was like, oh, okay. And the guy told me, he was like, you're going to be a healer. Or, like you're a psychic. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I think I'm just traumatized, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be sitting on the ground a lot? I was like, <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> he did entity removals on me. He did all these different things. I learned all this stuff. Like he showed me the pain in my body was from past lives too. And like showed me the relationship with my abusers in the past and all this different stuff. But I've done so many different things. I've done family constellation therapy. I've done, I've done past life stuff. I've done, I literally feel like I've done everything. Somatic, EMDR, blah, blah, blah. I'm like the amount of money I spent on healing. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's you know? definitely been a journey. But if I didn't spend the money, I yeah, would be here. Exactly. So I have a love-hate relationship with that, that resentment of, mm, you know, I spent so much money and like looking at other things, I'm like, do I have to spend more? You know, yeah. now I want to spend more on supporting other people, supporting other healers and like giving back in this new earth energy, Yeah, you know? Thank goodness. Sure. Yep. And no, it's nice to know that there's like a place to go now. You know, like before it was yeah. like, where yeah. am I going? What am I doing? Oh, I'm meeting this random person who, I mean, I have so much trauma. I call them some, you know, very questionable yes. people, you know, like. Right. Because <laughs> we really, we're it's, looking it's, for these people when we, we can't trust ourselves. Yeah. You know, and we're confused. And so. When you're talking about your higher self and your spirit team, they have saved us and saved us and saved us. I know I I, I got saved so many times, Same. you know, and when I look back, don't you think, okay, the times that I wasn't saved exactly, I needed to learn something or I was in the store and I picked that box for that experience, yeah. you know, and put it in my cart. But other than that, I feel saved, saved and saved same over and over again yeah and i i'm like do i bring this up so yeah. a lot of my not so favorable choices came while i was medicated 
is what I noticed in my journey. And yep. And I then when I got off of those medications, I then had all these realizations and learned all these things about how they created holes in your aura, you know? So that would make sense how the, I was, you know, I was doing the right thing per se for me, but from a lower part of me, which was, which was traumatized, which was then creating the trauma over again. So until I cycles just stuck yep, in the loop it was in the cycle. Going in and I couldn't see it because I couldn't feel anything because I was so numb. And what I've learned from that is that when I was medicated, I was ignoring my feelings. And what I have learned over the past, I've been un, I've been off of medication since 2020. Uh, so that's almost four years, is that like my feelings are the guiding factor in this, not my thoughts. Whereas my thoughts were the guiding factor while I couldn't feel. And that's not to demonize medication at all. It's just that I had my experience deeply. And like some of the things that have healed me the most is the plant medications that I have uh, like used to help heal me. And that's what put me in a better place is the plants. So that's also like where the grounding stuff comes into. Like, I feel like I'm always using mother earth like she's my bestie you know yeah yeah I mean grounding is really important yeah it really really is important but having a balance of those things um mm -hmm. I know that I had to not learn the hard way about grounding but I could see myself like first of all people can meditate you said you needed to meditate for many many hours to to regulate yourself but how many people, like somebody said to me the other day, they're like, oh, my friend is really healthy. He meditates like five hours every day. I'm like, that's a trauma response. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I would meditate and I'd be like communing with the angels, you know, all day and just really loving the way that I would feel, you know, yeah. and, but then I'm like, okay felt like I was getting carried away with the balloon <laughs> you, you know <laughs> yeah. I, I'm hanging with the angels like, yeah. you know, forever but you have to come back to earth that's our job is to be right here right now and I love how you went like this making the infinity symbol because it is both mm -hmm. absolutely you know? mm -hmm. yeah so yep. you're finishing your book I, I only want to keep you for an hour I want can you come back and talk about your book there like there's this whole thing I wanted to talk about spiritual bypassing um practical applications like there's so much we didn't talk about <laughs> it's perfect it's okay I'll definitely come back I know why this happened <laughs> <laughs> okay fantastic so thank you so much so you are on Instagram mostly that's your primary pl yep. platform right for people to find you yes okay Gab C A C C catch. And I will put it underneath. So Down if people want to find you, they can. Is there anything I'm else? Huh? You say I'm accepting new clients now. So Oh good, because you're almost done with the Because yeah, because I'm at the tail end of the book. I mean every sentence I'm writing, I'm getting nauseous, so <laughs> I'm almost I'm done, so, guys. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And um now you're grounding on the beach, right? Yes. Where you ground in Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much, Gabriella. Thank you Thank so you. much. I really appreciate it. I'm so proud of you. I just love you to pieces. I love you too. Thank you so much.